if there isn't any particular request, what I want to do first is finally demonstrate this algorithm. You've seen me use this in lecture videos. I put this on agenda a few times, but I never got to it. Today, I don't have anything else on the agenda, so I think it's a good time to kind of show you some of the things you can do with it, why um, I was excited to learn about this like uh, three or four years ago. It hasn't been all that long. Um, I think 2017, 2018 is when I first found out about it. And it, it's a pretty cool uh, simulator for physics uh, 4A stuff, this class and stuff. So let me, oh, so this link goes to a place where you can download it. Now for, um, the Linux users out there, or oh, I guess if you're using Chromebook, so this doesn't work on Chromebook. Um, it works on Windows, and it works on uh, uh, Mac OS. And I think this one you have to buy, it's not free. Um, and I don't even know how well that works. Um, so it works on Windows and Mac. Um, Linux or Chromebook, Sorry, um, this doesn't work. It's one of the reasons I'm not doing any required stuff with it. Um, so with that, let me just launch the version that's installed on my Windows computer. Um, so, and uh, this is a kind of an old software, so they will never update it. I, I don't, given that it has no security implications, I don't think they're doing any bug fixes. Um, so I forget what this was about. Uh, I might have built this to s demonstrate something to someone. Just gonna bring up a whole new thing um, so that you can just start from scratch. Uh, this is a physics simulator. So it can do, I think there's a lecture video of me just uh, playing with this too. I'm basically doing that. Uh, I don't know why it took it so long to drop just to now. Um, Am I on a different graphic? Let me just check. Okay, I'm in the regular gravity. Um, okay, let me just uh, check the material properly. It's possible that I made it. No, that's regular. All right, maybe my computer is just running a little slow. So anyways, it's a simulator, simulator. And with the simulations, I think there's a value in a kind of playing with it to see if it uh, makes intuitive sense to you. And pl uh, kind of looking through the menu items to explore what kind of things are possible. So one of the things that are possible with this simulation is to adjust the material property to accomplish something that's uh, impossible in the real world. Uh, something like, so restitution, I'm pretty sure that's a synonym for elasticity. Uh, yeah, bounciness of the material. So uh, I made it maximum possible value, one. Let's see what happens. Mm. So it bounces maybe a little bit more than before, but not as much as I would like. Uh, let's see if there's something else I can do. So this is interacting with this ground. Let's look at the material of the ground. Okay, that also has restitution. Let me just change that to 1.0 as well. All right, that's looking more like it. Looks like, uh, I, I don't know what the name for that is, the bouncy rubber ball. Um, is it slowly? Oh, I think I know what's causing it. So this is actually one of the things to um, explore. So let me uh, show you what I mean. I'm moving the screen so that I think I can, um, let me plot it. Uh, this is one of the things you can do in simulation much more easily than you can do um, with the real world. You know, in real world, you have to set up stuff and whatnot. So I guess I'm plotting against the time and speed. Okay, and it's definitely doing the thing that I thought it was doing, which is, um, so it started out at some maximum speed and over time it's, uh, um, you know, going down in speed. So I'm pretty sure, so let me change what I'm plotting. Instead of speed, I'm going to plot Y position, height. And as I do that, I can see that the, 
height is actually decreasing, I think. Yeah, it's definitely decreasing. It wasn't just to my eyes. <laughs> the simulation confirms it. And uh, as you are looking at this, you might wonder, uh, why is it doing that? I thought, you know, I made a simulation so that there's no, uh, you know, it's as bouncy as I can make it. And uh, and simulation is nice because it's a kind of a setup where you can explore on your own and it's a lot easier to explore than a physical setup would be. So, and, you know, some of the menu items, the parameters that are explicitly programmed in, it might give you some idea. So I see friction and I'm used to thinking of friction as causing, uh, you know, causing loss of energy. So maybe if I get rid of friction, it'll stop doing what it was doing. Maybe, maybe not. <laughs> we'll see. I happen to know the actual answer in this case. Um, <laughs> so the actual answer in this case, it's air resistance. And I think uh, you can see it with uh, people doing um, pendulum experiments. So, you know, whenever you set up, like pendulum was one of your, your first, uh, or yeah, that was your first lab. I mean, not the first meetings lab, but the second meeting and the first real lab that you did. Uh, you had a pendulum and, you know, in the real pendulum, you so the um, swing of the pendulum go, go down over time. And you might have seen that. And it's uh, in a physical lab, it's uh, kind of easy to chalk it up as uh, the human error or experimental error and 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 some of it is right you know some of the things are due to by the way, not the human error because that was me being facetious i hated when people use that term <laughs> i think you should be more precise about your source of error but it is uh, true that in any physical experimental setup there are imperfections there are things that you can eliminate so, you know, in this setup, it was as easy as me just changing the material property and voila, I'm done. But in real world, you can't really get 100% elastic collision. That just uh, isn't, oh, except maybe with the magnet. Unless you are repelling magnet, um, it's uh, almost impossible to get that. Um, and with the simulation, what's nice is you can consider each of these uh, imperfections one at a time, change their parameters, either eliminate it or sometimes some um, aspects of simulation is quite difficult to eliminate it. In those cases, you can at least uh, um, change the parameter in that you can make it worse. <laughs> and See what happens when you make it worse. Does the thing that you are attributing to the uh, air resistance get worse? Maybe a little. Let me make it even worse. Uh, so by a, so this is by a factor of five more than just the before. Um, and okay, now it's uh, definitely worse. Um, but you can kind of say, oh, it's not linear. It and it's uh, so there's a reason for that. <laughs> Let me not spoil everything. Uh, simulation is just nice because it's the kind of thing that you can explore on your own. You don't because um, uh, this is really one. Weakness of a lecture because you know lectures are super efficient. In a lecture, I can tell you everything I think you need to know, and uh, if you're paying attention, you can absorb all of it. And um, but it, it that's not really the complete training of being an engineer or a scientist. Because uh, if you are only doing what you are told, then you don't need an engineer or scientist for that. Engineer or scientist, they are too expensive <laughs> to have them in a role where they're just doing what they are told. Um, you need to be the one to figure out those things yourself. And in a lecture setting, it's hard for me to really do that. I mean, um, a lot of times when I try to do it, it kind of often ends up looking like I'm asking trick questions, which I hate to do. Um, but in a simulation setting like this, this is a kind of open sandbox simulation where you can try out different things and you can figure out the answers to yourself or maybe looking at these parameters, <laughs> you will have some inspiration to look up some of the um, terms and try to figure it out yourself. Um, okay, so let me change this up around a little bit to show you the um, uh, pendulum simulation and maybe point out some of the um, pitfalls of simulation. Um, so I'm going to glue this to the background so that it doesn't move. 
I'm just using this as a hanging place, uh, which I'm realizing now I didn't really need, but I already have it, so I'll use it. Um, I think I could have just, uh, I was going to hang a chain so that I have a pendulum. Um, but I, I think uh, I could have just glued one end of the chain to the background instead of that. It's fine. Mm -hmm. Do I want rope or chain? It doesn't really matter. It's just a visual thing. Uh, let me do rope just because it's nicer looking. All right. Um, I think. <laughs> All right. It did something weird first. And then um, this row might actually have some issues already. Uh, I'm just going to increase the friction but to just to make the um, oscillations go away. All right. So this is one of the things I can do. I can plot. I um, think the good thing to plot will be... Uh, let me plot speed. I think speed will be okay. Um, the real parameter I want to plot for a pendulum motion is um, angle, but I don't think the system lets me plot that. So I think speed will be a good uh, proxy for some of the things happening. Um, so, okay, I'm going to just run the simulation. And oh wow, it's all, still moving a little bit. I think that's what this is. So I'm just gonna pull this to the side, and then uh, let go. And just watch it swing back and forth, and it's a pendulum motion. And um, yeah, you see the the oscillation damping out over time. So let's say what you want you to do is explore. Why is the pendulum motion not perpetual? You know, if uh, energy is conserved, shouldn't it be? Shouldn't this motion be perpetual? So maybe you think, okay, um, uh, maybe, uh, so let's uh, get rid of the usual suspect. We'll get rid of the usual properties that lead to loss of mechanical energy. Uh, get rid of friction, make it 100% elastic, uh, do the same for ropes. Or whatever that's worth. Oh, no, I don't know what this will do. Let me just give that a try. Um, and just for fun, let's just do the same thing for here. And just out of paranoia, let's do that for the ground. I mean, ground, uh, ground is already there. Okay, let's see what happens now. Um, yeah. And um, then I guess uh, I've already spoiled a bit of the answer because in the Previous scenario, you see me turn off the air resistance and how turning off air resistance makes this perfectly flat. So, so this is what I'm getting at. You know, in a lecture, I will have given you this answer and basically taken away from you the joy of finding this out for yourself. So let me pretend that I didn't give that answer. And so this is the place where sometimes the simulations can. Um, can go wrong, or you have to be watchful when you are dealing with the simulations. Let me give this a try. So, you know, you let's say you haven't figured this out, and you're trying to see, uh, think through what other imperfections can you remove from this setup, and maybe you remember from your some of your question wording talking about massless rope. So you imagine, okay. Um, my rope has mass, so maybe that's what the issue is. Let's, uh, you know, it has density, which leads to mass. So let's uh, just get rid of the mass of the rope. Maybe that'll, um, uh, that'll, okay, it doesn't actually go to zero, but okay, let's minimize it as much as I can. And let's see what happens. And, oh wow, in this setup, nothing happens. Um, Maybe this setup is a little too tame. Let me just give this a try. Uh, no, there it is. <laughs> um, yeah, so that's uh, what's going to happen. Uh, let's see. Can I go back to where this was? Uh, I think that's actually after I uh, can redo track. Go in. Okay, so this is the oscillation back and forth. Um, and yeah, so, I mean, even if you, so um, yeah, so simulation does do this. Um, it doesn't like having massless row. 
<laughs> That's really what it comes down to. The density of the rope has to be at least a certain value to avoid um, avoid uh, that kind of glitching happening. And um, what that value needs to be depends on the setup. Uh, I think sometimes when you make the rope to even this looks super weird. Uh, and here's one of the things you can kind of explore to see if this kind of weirdish. Um, Weird motion of this bar, if it's having to do with the simulation glitching out, or maybe it's something else, and um, and this is the one of the places where simulation being simulation helps you kind of renormalize your parameter. So let's say you wanted the mass less rope, then what you really want isn't exactly zero mass for the rope. Um, what you really want is a negligible mass for the rope. So you could leave the mass, um, mass of the rope the same, but instead of change the mass of the bar. That's the kind of thing that, um, you know, in the real world sometimes is impractical. Maybe you don't have a, a larger mass available. Maybe, um, um, maybe um, if you attach the too large of a mass, uh, your your rope would uh, break in the real world, but in the simulation world, uh, you can do that. I just want to see if that a uh, weird jerking at the end was. Uh, maybe that is tied to the mess a little bit or not. Okay. Um, sorry, I'm just going to play with this a little bit. So let me just reduce. Try reducing the mess of the rope by a factor of ten. See what happens. Okay, nothing unusual. Uh, let me just because uh, it might also have to do with how the motion is set up at the beginning. Uh, I'm trying to drag it from the center as much as I can. All right, I guess that whole jerkiness thing that might have been just uh, this being uh, pushed the wrong way uh, while I was trying to adjust it. Maybe I don't know. Um, but so this is the kind of thing where I want to encourage you to play with it. It's uh, the kind of thing that if I'm doing, it, you know, it can take a lot of time. And I think uh, people will learn just uh, uh, playing with the setup. Um, so I'll just leave it there. Uh, I, I don't think people learn from watching me play with the setup. So um, yeah, and and this setup can actually do quite a bit. It uh, uh, let me just end with this. Uh, um, and the demonstration of some of the things that are available. You've seen the rope, you've seen just regular masses and stuff. Um, it also has a spring. So, oops. So you can do something like this. Um, I have a box. I think this is the spring. I can attach it here. Um, uh, I think I have an idea what this will do, but let me just run it. Yeah, you can do that. Um, a lot of times uh, it'll... Uh, I think the place where I first uh, saw this simulation was actually in uh, some civil engineers YouTube channel. And I think there's a reason for that. It, it's kind of a fun way to demonstrate structural things. Because, you know, it's uh, easy for me to say in a physics problem, you know, uh, mass is sitting on top of the spring without thinking about what that's going to mean. It's going to mean the mass will get knocked over. <laughs> um, so once I've seen that happen and realize, oh, yeah, I got to make sure it doesn't do that, then I can provide a support that will prevent it from knocking, uh, being knocked over. And I can now, uh, OK, watch the spring. And I can play with it a little. Um, <laughs> That sort of thing. And um, you can use this simulation to demonstrate. Um, I guess in the video I remember, he was demonstrating something called, um, what is it, tuned damper. Uh, it's the thing that um, that's built into a high-rise uh, skyscrapers to make them safe under windy conditions. Because uh, under windy conditions, uh, the 
tuned to harmonic damper, I think that's what they're called. Under windy conditions, unless uh, the building has uh, some built-in mechanism to dissipate away the oscillatory energy, it could uh, actually oscillate on resonance and break apart. There are bridges that's broken apart to that way. Um, so anyway, so it's got springs, um, it's got axle to, um, uh, to, yeah, it's got axle to um, help things kind of rotate around the stuff. Um, so yeah, <laughs> um, I guess. Oh wait, now that I added the Excel, I think I can get rid of this. Uh, I guess you can um, build a simulated world um, motor or a crank system or whatever. Um, yeah, and it's got this uh, thruster thing. Oh, which I wanted to use to actually demonstrate something. Um, so 